Thoughts, views, and comments expressed by Rodney Monker, his guests, callers, and advisors on Freedom March are not necessarily those of the management, ownership, or production unit of ILS, the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is a production of ILTV Studios and cannot be reproduced or represented in part or entirety without the express written consent of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is the intellectual property of the Verizon Media Group. Copyright 2017. All rights are reserved. The role of a woman in the society is to submit. Birth control are the pills of the devil. Education is so fundamental to the development of a people. Hi, murderers. Simple as that. What am I voting for? Voting will change nothing. Good moon I see Kumo ye. God save the queen. Broadcasting live from ILTV Studios here in Nassau, Bahamas. Welcome to Freedom March. My name is Rodney Monker. I'm a Justice of the Peace here within the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And of course, I'm a member of the local Catholic Christian community. I have been contemplating for the last 10 minutes. What sins has the people of Grand Bahama committed? that it appears that from the mistreatment of them, notwithstanding that they have elected five members of the free national movement to the parliament of the Bahamas. I wonder, oh my people of Grand Bahama, what sins have you committed? Have you failed to continue to worship the God of the holy people of holy Israel. Because I am hearing the cries of the woman them in Grand Bahama. A Negro woman today responsible for a number of Negro children petitioned the Department of Social Services and by the time they demanded to inspect her house and her cupboard. She was left frustrated. And as they turned that woman away, she became ill and she began to cascade and puke along that great road. But thank God, as she vomit, puke and cascade, Hardly anything to bring up. Time God. A relative was passing by and rescued her. My God. It is as if the devil has turned loose in Grand Bahama. And it is as if the FNM represents the gates of hell. Because I've never seen a government in power do to their supporters what the FNM is doing to the Negro poor. It is my prayer that the woman from Pine Ridge will go quickly and find her member of parliament. It's a sad story, and I don't know what I'm going to say. But, madam, I am so sorry that the FNM isn't prepared to give you and the children them food. These are some of the things on my mind. And so when I come back, I don't know what I'm going to say. I am speechless. Who in the FNM has heart for the poor? You all ask for this. You all say, you all want all the seats. And the Negro people, listen to you all. And my God, woman puke herself up, she cascade, vomit along the street, and there was hardly anything to come up out of her stomach. My people in Grand Bahama, I don't know what to say. The most I can do right now is to pray for you and hope 
that God will touch the hearts of these Negroes who are in charge of the country. Be right back in a minute. Freedom March with Rodney Monker will be right back after this. This is Freedom March with Rodney Monker. Welcome back to Freedom March, broadcasting live on ILTV Studios here in Nassau, Bahamas. My eyes have been taken to today's edition of the Bahama Journal. I'd like to show it to you because Wendell Jones is beginning to demonstrate to me that he's a saved man, that he's committed to what I call investigative journalism. And of course, in more recent time, he seems to be becoming much more fairer and impartial as he treats the PLP better. I want to show you the newspaper because there is a headline that he has that disturbs me. The headline in today's edition of the Bahama Journal reads as follows, and I quote, Bishop wants records of juvenile crimes expunged. So here is the Bahama Journal. And the Negro bishop is responsible for the sudden district of the island. Bishop Simeon Hall. Simeon wants the FNM to expunge records of juvenile crimes. Listen, Simeon, you are about 30-something years behind the black ball. In 1981, a number of young Negro males and a number of Negro females met with the late Sir Lyndon Oscar Pinling and the late Boylan Pratt and Andrew Dud Maynard. Of the trio, only Andrew Dud Maynard is alive and can verify or deny that which I shall inform the nation of. We told Pinling that we wanted legislation to expunge certain category of criminal offenses for young people. And we sat down and we negotiated. Pending wanted to know what we were talking about. He said, Selinden, you know, a little bit of herbs. If the young man is caught with a little bit of herbs, we don't think that his life ought to be destroyed. And we talk about other crimes. Because I had a neighbor who jumped in the neighbor yard and thief some tilly. He was about 12 or 13. Do you know for years? On his character certificate, he was convicted for stealing Sapo Tiller. And that had to be wrong. Normally, when I catch my neighbor children, I had a thief in my tamarind, my canap, my dilly, my hog plum. I was row. I was like to row. I got up in the middle of the black village and I said, why are you all thief in my things? Shouldn't you all ask me? And then, of course, shouldn't y'all pick some for me? Because in the whole of Black Village, I have the biggest tamarind tree. And I got a couple of them tamarind tree. And I just love to stand up and row over the tamarind. And I catch them in the tree. All right? I just row and tell them, bring me some. So we know that children will, you know, teeth the little tamarind. Thief the um, mango, because I also have a number of mango trees. So we talk with Pinling about it. Simeon Hall, go check the law, eh? Pinling did that almost 30 years ago. Certain category of juvenile offenses are applicable to adults. Now, if you commit murder, that can't be expunged. If you are convicted of manslaughter, that, there is no provision for that. If there is armed robbery, to the best of my knowledge, 
There are no um, provision in the law to expunge it. So you have two categories. One, seven years. So depending on the petty crime, after seven years, the crime is expunged from your record. Now, if you are on the sixth year, but you commit another crime, then you must start all over. And then, of course, there are categories of criminal offenses which cannot be expunged until after 14 years. And if you, could, if you were to reoffend on the 13th year, it starts all over. So, I mean, go do your search, eh? And see that this which you asked for, Penling and the PLP has done it, must be about 30 years ago. Thanks to some great Negro activists. There were people like Raymond, people like Roman Nichols, Leonard Miller from Black Village, Nicola Jacks, Philip Miller, taxi driver Augustus Fountain. So all of them. And of course, you know I was present. And there were some other Negroes, many who sat down and negotiated with Pinling, the late Senator Berlin Pratt, and the, the uncle of Allison Maynard, Dud Maynard, Andrew Dud Maynard, who is currently hanging out with the FNF. So I just want Simeon to think about it because he is forgotten. So this has already been dealt with, Mr. Hall. Please come back with some other socio-political issue. I just had to remind them over that one. Now, there is a developing controversy that is taking place. You would recall that on Monday, at a handing over ceremony at police headquarters on East Street, Green Slate, became the outgoing commissioner of police. And then, of course, Anthony Ferguson became the incoming commissioner of police. Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Hubert Alexander Minnis gave what I would regard as the keynote address. And in his keynote address, he went back along memory lane. He went back to a history of the Progressive Liberal Party sitting in the audience as Dr. Minnis criticized the late Prime Minister Sir Lyndon Oscar Pindling and the PLP was Governor General, Her Excellency, Dame Margaret Pinling. Dame Margaret Pinling sat there as Minnes launched perhaps one of the most vicious political attack on the Governor General's late husband. That is what he did. This morning, in the Nassau Guardian, opposition leader Philip Brave Davis has attempted to come to the rescue of Penling and the PLP. When Monique Penling Johnson spoke at the Progressive Liberal Party convention, while I respect her civic and political rights as a citizen to speak on any issue and to speak at her father's party, the PLP, I respect that. But she opened a box when she spoke. One, she ought to have recognized that she is the last baby child of the Governor General and that any speech she made can be examined and depending on what she says, those in opposition to the PLP can attack. I thought 
It's only me. I'm not very educated. I don't have too much class. I was a grassroots man. I live in Black Village. I ain't too educated. You know what kind of man I am. I see things. I hear things. And of course, I know things. So I'm not as sophisticated. So you may reject my submission. But please don't reject it until you analyze what I'm trying to say. After the speech of Monique Penling Johnson, one of the first things that the Prime Minister did was to support it. That is what he did. Monique raised the question of corruption in the PLP, and I said to myself, wow, is she aware that A. Loftus Roker in 1994 accused Pendling and the PLP of corruption to the very core of its foundation? Loftus still there. His full name is Archibald. Archibald Loftus Roker. Sometimes when we are giving speeches, we need to talk to historian. We need to understand who we are at a given point in the history of the nation. Pinling, as you knew, was king of the Bahamas. And by extension, each of his children are princes and princesses. And therefore, they in the history and in the PLP are part and parcel of the struggle of the party, whether or not they realize it or not. I am going to make a grassroots suggestion to the children of the founding father. It may not be a good idea. While Dame Margaret sits at the top of Government Hill, and as the personal representative of our blessed sovereign, Queen Elizabeth II, to make political speeches. Because, as we can see, Dr. Menes has no shame, nor does he have political class. And therefore, he gave the police a political charge as he talked about fighting corruption and setting up the various mechanisms to fight corruption. But as he talk about fighting corruption, he's gone back to the 1970s and to the 1980s, where he has awoken the spirit of Salinden and the PLP. All I'm saying, we have to be careful. We have to know our history, and it may be a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for the children of founding fathers Salinden not to make political speeches. You have a right to do it. You all are citizens. But when you make speech, be prepared for all kinds of counterattack that might be embarrassing to our blessed sovereign. Well, her representative. That is what I meant to say. It would be embarrassing to the governor general. I just thought that I should say it to you because Philip Brave Davis is now forced to attempt to put up a defense and to point out the goodness of pinling. I'm going to tell you Negroes something. And I mean, this is the last time that I'm going to be forced to defend. All right? Because I is F and M. Don't forget that. But I'm an F and M who is in love with the PLP. And I'm out to stop the F and M from spreading vicious propaganda. There is an element that led to the 1984 Commission of Inquiry. What is that element? Well, we know that NBC had 
cast a serious aspersion of corruption and drug smuggling on the part of Penling and the PLP. We know from the finding of the Commission of Inquiry of 1984, there was no evidence to prove that Penling had done such a deed. I shall tell you a secret that many Negroes are not aware of. The 1984 Commission of Inquiry was forced on the PLP and it was designed to force Penling and the PLP from holding out on signing a contract with the United States government. What was that contract? That you Negroes, I'm tired of trying to educate you all. You see, I know things. I hear things. I spoke with powerful men who are now dead. They can't defend themselves, so I should not call their name. The United States government, as a part of its experimentation and its military defense for you Negroes, was always concerned that as the contract involving the contract at the base in Andres was coming to a close, it would appear that Penling and the PLP were not moving swiftly to sign the contract. And so there is a political theory that had been advanced that the allegation against Penling and the PLP in 83-84 was designed to bring political pressure on them because the Americans needed the base. You see what's going on? The Americans soon get ready to attack North Korea. Nobody tell me this, but I rely on a Negro source who was flying over Andres one day and he told me how he got a shock of his life. When a huge submarine came up out of the ocean, he's never seen a submarine as big as that. And from his evidence before me, I've concluded that Andres is not only an oceanic research base, but the Americans have atomic bombs there. And so it's a part of their defense. And um, pending them was dragging their foot. And so the Americans drop a bomb sucky. A bomb sucky when Brian Ross on NBC fire a scud that almost sunk pending in the PLP. But subsequently, in 87, pending hell on by his pending hell on. Five years later, Hubert Ingram, run him out. This is Freedom March. Freedom March with Rodney Monker will be right back after this. The thoughts, views, and comments expressed by Rodney Monker, his guests, callers, and advisors on Freedom March are not necessarily those of the management, ownership, or production unit of ILS, the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is a production of ILTV Studios and cannot be reproduced or represented in part or entirety without the express written consent of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is the intellectual property of the Verizon Media Group. Copyright 2017. All rights are reserved. Welcome back to Freedom March, broadcasting live on ILTV Studios here in Nassau, Bahamas. When we took the adjournment, I was attempting to give you another theory as to why Ra Brian Ross from NBC dropped a boom suki on Pinling and the PLP wrong September of 1983, culminating in the appointment of a Royal Blue Ribbon Commission of Inquiry into Pinling and the PLP and as it relates to drug smuggling. I just wanted to give you that other theory that it culminated or it began from the fact that the Americans wanted the contract on the place in 
Andres. You know where they have the base? They wanted that to be signed. And so that is one of the most powerful theory. And I also told you about a Negro man who appeared before me. And while flying, he claimed over Andres, he saw the biggest United States submarine that he has ever seen in his life. Because don't forget, the base is in the tongue of the ocean. All right? And the Americans are doing all kinds of experiments. You remember when the whale dam used to come up on the seashore and they couldn't find the ocean because it was alleged that the United States was doing some experimentation and underwater it confused the whale dam. We, we complained, but we couldn't get the Americans to stop because you know they could beat us. They have bomb. They have plenty of money. They have plenty of food. And then there's plenty of tourists living in America. You see how things is? They got plenty of tourists in America. All them people over there living is tourists. And we need tourists. And they have more money and more weapons. And they're smart. So some of us suck our teeth as the whale them came ashore and perish. So that is a part of the history. And I'm forced to tell you about that. I also need to say to you, I've never been to their base, but I am told, and don't laugh, that the base is like a magic base. You would recall that when Whitney Bastian was the MP for Sudden Andres, he had made some allegation how the base them was causing people them to catch cancer. And they wanted uh, a parliamentary team to go to the base to inspect. But the Americans say that Whitney Bastian, for unsafe reason, could not come to the base. But I, if I'm correct, Tall Pines Member of Parliament, the then Tall Pines Member of Parliament, Leslie Miller and a Negro delegation was allowed to visit the base. The Americans touch a button. And when they touch the button, everything on the base disappear. So when Leslie them got on the base, they couldn't see nothing. All right? Those Negroes look up and down the base. First of all, they didn't know what they was looking for. But they felt that had they been allowed to go to the base, they would be able to conclude whether or not the base was contributing to cancer them. And the Americans smart. I don't know how they do it. But they touched something. And they had Leslie them walking up and down. And they couldn't see nothing. And when they came off the base, they reported with their Negro self that everything was fine. And that is what took place there. So I'm giving you all that story to let you know what a part of the other theory was that greater than the Americans' concern over drug smuggling was the need to get Pinling and Paul Adley and the PLP to sign the agreement. What is the name of that base in Andres? Ortec Base. Ortec Base. But you all ain't know nothing about that. Because y'all are not investigative journalists. See, I know. Because I can play various parts. And I play investigative journalism. And so I know what's going on. But it is my hope and prayer that Monique Penling Johnson will cease from giving political speeches until the Margaret leaves the Honorable House, Government House. Because you see what men is doing. And that isn't good. We have to be smart. And so that is all I'm going to say. But before I conclude, I would need to read the Guardian story so you could get an idea of what took place. So listen, this is the Guardian. Don't mind Candy ain't safe. I still wanted to make a living. And every time I put up the Guardian, the Tribune, 
The Punch and the Bahama Journal, their sales double. So today, buy Guardian, buy Tribune, buy the Punch in the morning, and buy the Bahama Journal. Now, the same way I advise you all to buy, when I tell you all, don't buy, I want you all to listen to me again. So let me read this little bit of story because this is so important that Minis is giving the charge to the police as he talk about fighting corruption. You hear me? So let me give you what Davis defense, Sir Linden. Progressive Liberal Party leader Philip Brave Davis yesterday defended the Pinlings administration's actions during the dark drug years of the 1980s and chastised Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis for denigrating the party at the handing over ceremony for new Commissioner of Police, Anthony Ferguson. It was very unbecoming yesterday, in my view, said Philip Brave Davis, at an occasion that is supposed to be a national event for the Prime Minister to continue to be campaigning to denigrate the Progressive Liberal Party, said Davis, when called for comment. First of all, this is 2017, and I don't know who is putting, their, putting these words in his mouth about the 1970s and 1980s. I was there in the 70s and 80s and very much a part of the criminal justice scene between the era. The challenges that any government would have had at that time to police our archipelago, our archipelago, that's the proper pronunciation, our archipelago with respect to the transshipment of drugs through, though, through it, though it was immense, Davis said, Minas should spend more time. It's a very important piece of work here that Philip Brave Davis has advanced. So just bear with me for a second because I need to read this other piece so that Minas words can also be heard. He continued highlighting what his government intends to do for the country because it appears that he has no plan. Philip Ray Davis said it appears that Minas has no plan. During his speech at the handing over ceremony at police headquarters, Minas said the great challenge of criminal violence is rooted in a sad and sordid history. In the 1970s and 80s, the Bahamas became a nation for sale, he said. We were a narco state. Foreign drug dealers set up bases in our island. The government of the day turned a blind eye to the merchants of drugs and death. Our social order and the minds and bodies of our sons and daughters were being poisoned by illicit drugs and the wanton disregard for human life and life-affirming values. That's what the Prime Minister said. The Prime Minister also repeated a portion of his first national address in which he said the crime problem Bahamian face today was set in motion by the sense of the past. Leaders choose corruption and fast money over the best interests of our people, he said. The late former Prime Minister Sir Lyndon Pindling led the country during that time. His widow, Governor General De Margaret Pindling, attended the handing over ceremony. She looked on from the audience as Menace spoke 
after his speech, Menes and Dame Margaret, whom he was seated next to, shared a brief exchange followed by a laugh. Davis said the PLP, under Salinden's leadership, worked hard during the drug era to reduce the flow of drugs into the Bahamas. The Bahamas was faced with a rampant culture of drug use and drug smuggling in the 1970s and 1980s. In 1983, the government established a commission of inquiry into the drug trade. The commission found that Sir Lyndon had more than $3 million in his bank accounts than his official income. However, most commission members found that his wealth could not be directly or indirectly traced to the drug trade. Davis insisted it was Sir Lyndon's action that secured help from the Americans in the fight against the illegal drug trade. It was only after the plea by the then Prime Minister Sir Lyndon Pinling for the U.S. to get more involved to provide assistance in our efforts because we were being overwhelmed by the scourge. Obat was then created, he said. The tripartite effort between the United Kingdom through the Tykes and Caicos and the U.S. was created and at the end of the day, between 1992, the police department and the government were praised for the efforts that they had engaged in because it was recognized that the transshipment had been reduced to the irreducible minimum. Minas has, on several occasions, spoken of what he has called the negative impact the PLP has had on the country. During a free national movement event over the weekend, many said that the PLP cannot and will not change, especially given their new leader. When asked his thoughts on Minister's comments, Davis said, quote, he obviously doesn't know me for him to suggest that. He has not been listening to me. He's been wrapped up in his own political propaganda. Davis said that men should wait and see and be patient. So here we have the governor general present. And Sir Lyndon is her husband. And that is what Minnis says. But Minnis has not been fair. I want him to tell me why Penland called Janet Boswick Gotti. Huh? Tell me why. And I want him to tell me what Janet Boswick and Henry Boswick Spanish court baby name. So if we're going to talk history from the 1970s and the 1980s, I want him to speak the whole story. Because I can tell you all, I have never had a Spanish baby, nor have I ever stood godfather for any Spanish children. All right? Y'all better be careful because you're going to cause me to tell these young people something. Because for 30 years, I prayed, wondered, analyzed, and tried to figure out why did Pinling reveal that Janet Boswick was gaudy? But y'all PLPs, I can stop defending y'all. You better tell the Margaret children to keep quiet until she get off government house because menace will embarrass her. And that's all that is about. But y'all ain't gonna listen to me because y'all think I'm stupid. You say, what do you mean now? About the other allegation. Because I was very tight with a very intellectual Negro man who sat in high office in the PLP. And he used to tell me little things. Because when I sit down with him, I listen. So that's what's going on there. Okay? 
That's what's going on there. If we're going to talk all the talk, let's not only walk, let's talk all. Because I am 60 and the countdown is on my birthday. This is my birthday month. November 30th. I shall be 60 plus. Oh, praise the Lord. 60 plus. Man, I wake, y'all waking me so hard. Every time y'all get in trouble, I get to come and help to clean up the mess. And y'all don't like me? Nobody likes me. Oh boy, I feel like a motherless child. I feel like a motherless child. Where is my producer? I need to take solace. Where's the producer? Goodness me, these F and M's the boss got in the back here, man. I need solace. Give me the drums so that my soul may dance. Oh, 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 oh. I need it. Give me the music. Ah. Oh. I need it because only me, only me knows the secret because I can see and hear things. I see, I see the Spanish baby. Oh, I see it. Janet! Why pen and call you Gordy? Oh, I see the baby. I see things. Listen. Oi. I'm in a trance. Oi. I'm. I. I. I see things. I see the baby. I see Gordy. I see the Godfather. I see Janet. Janet! Janet, baby, baby. I see things. And I want y'all to stop it. Oh, I see things. I see things. Listen, something magical happened. The water fell down. And the studio needs to be mopped up. Oh boy. They wake me so hard. Oh, they wake me so hard. So, that is what is taking place. That is what is taking place. I got to defend. Monique, I want you to stop it. All speeches must be put on hold until the Margaret leaves the hill because menace and those are looking out to distract the country people are unemployed a whole negro woman in a in grand bahama went to social service poor woman begging for food food and these negroes ain't got no god in their heart a whole negro government in Pine Ridge, woman wouldn't give the woman no food. Say so they got to come and check the woman's house. They have to come and check her cupboard. When the woman left, she was so upset. Her stomach was so sick. She began to puke and cascade and vomit. And as she complained, she was so emotional. As she complained to me, and I said to her, woman, who is your MP? Woman, who is your MP? And what constituency do you live in? She said, I live in Pine Ridge. I live in Pine Ridge. But her story was so sad. Lord, look how my people have come down. Where they have to go to the government and beg for food. But these Negroes who claim they love black people, my God, you couldn't give her a five pound of grits, a corned beef, one piece of onion, a little tomato paste, and some lard. 
and she got a cook. Same corned beef and white grits. Could you not have done it? Le What's the woman's name? My Alicia? Alicia? Lanisha? Are you really a pastor? Are you a pastor or are you a passage? That isn't poetic. But what's going on here? Our boy, Algernon and Allen, you and Mother Pratt must go out into the highways and raise money. And you got to go back down there. You mean to tell me the PLP who've made so many millionaires, can't you find some money and do urban renewal one more time? I can't take it when I hear my people begging. Don't you know we have dignity and we will only ask for food if we really cannot help ourselves. Oh boy, what a day in Grand Bahama. Woman puke herself up, puke herself up after being rejected by a government who claims it loves black people. But if it wasn't a sin, I would have told you all a real curse, but I'm not going to do it. Our lady, if you didn't puke, I would have said, fax your MP. But I'm convinced that Frederick Markle Pine do have the interests of the people of Pine Ridge. I do believe that. And so, just call him. Don't fax him. Call him and let him know. We have to find a way to help Grand Bahama. We have, we have to find a way. All them wealthy people in the FNM, men us know, if you need one $500,000, the conky Joes, they got the money. There's FNM. Men us know, when you need money, the FNM go to the conky Joe to get the money. And every conky Joe who wants the FNM in power should help Minnis. I appeal to the Conky Joe. I appeal to the Conky Joe to tell and to help Minnis because the people on the island of Grand Bahama is catching hell. Man, the woman puke. The woman puke, 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 puke. Cascade. When last have you cascade? But she cascade. Got them little black children. They need little food, and nobody would give her help. But thank God, Philip Brave Davis has promised us help and hope. Help and hope is on the way. Heidi, Heidi, country me, Bahamas catch up. No manje, no food. I pay moi. Bahamas give a pill problem. Minis pa gin bagay pu pebwayo angle. But I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh boy. I don't know. We are in trouble. We are in trouble. If only. My spiritual advisor would share the bounty that the FNM appears to be giving him. Ah, boy, what a country. Meanwhile, there is an atheist in the public treasury. I don't know if I should look at what he has to say in the paper. I don't know. But boy, oh, boy. We are in trouble. Lord Jesus, I beg of you, bless my Bahamaland. And Lord, all them tourists living in the United States, please send them, please send some here. Because today, the taxi drivers were supposed to close down the airport. 
Talk about that when I come back. This is Freedom Match. I'll be right back. Freedom March with Rodney Monker will be right back after this. This is Freedom March with Rodney Monker. Welcome back to Freedom March, broadcasting live on ILTV Studios here in Nassau, Bahamas. My name is Rodney Monker. My spiritual advisor, Bradley Roll, is finally in the studio with me. Bradley, how are you? I'm doing great, Mr. Monker. How about yourself? Listen, I'm fine. What's with all the theatrics, man? What's well, going on? I have to find something <sighs> to take my mind off these serious economic problems that poor people are faced with and are calling me about on a daily basis. Uh -huh. Okay. All right? It's like how a Negro lady called me about half an hour. She said, Monka, I work in the hotel industry uh -huh. and I'm advised that at age 55, we are supposed to be receiving pension. And she said, didn't you work in the hotel? I said, yes. And I've been 55 almost six years ago. And so finally, I have to go to the union because I worked in the hotel and we all would have been contributing to the pension fund. Right. Uh -huh. What is the name of the president of the union? Nicole Martin. Nicole Martin. Oh, okay. I and a number of Negroes has worked in the hotel industry. Are we entitled to pension? Because we contributed. And Nicole, if we are, please give me a call. My number is 434-5760. I need all the money I can find. Don't forget, they burned down my house. And I'm trying to repair one old house my grandma leave in the yard. And if I'm entitled to pension at age 55, I want my money. If I'm not, no problem. But it means I have to now go and check. Got to go find Thomas Bastian because it would have been him, if I'm correct, who would have negotiated the pension funds. And I don't want to be entitled and nobody told me. But if I'm not entitled, I won't be upset. But if I'm entitled, I need to know. So I can get my money. Thomas Bastian, please give me a call like about 6 30. My number is 434 5760. 434 5760. I could do that because it appears that once I do it, everybody knows when I do it. You follow my point? Absolutely. Look, looking yeah. for that Negro man, Autry Newbold. Yeah, you, I thought you found I found that. him. Okay. Uh, but he told me everybody in the Bahamas told him. You see? Okay. So that was extremely powerful. Let me crack a code before we run on some more. My spiritual advisor. Because, you know, Sabbath's them seems to have lots of money that they want to give out. And so people are being invited to crack the code. I want... The Haitian people to join in trying to crack the code because I need y'all to have money. Because when I beat Frankie in court and I get the court to rule that Frankie after David is good for everybody, may thousands of my people, the Haitian people, come forward and get their citizenship. Island luck. And the Ultra Games presents Crack the Code 2.0. Can you crack it? Went up to $250,000. Earn 25 reward points. And take your chance at cracking our secret code. Play now at All Island Luck and at Ultra Games locations as well as on our websites mobile platforms and kiosks if you crack the code at level one with six digits <coughs> you can win two hundred and fifty thousand dollars you have three days to crack level one after three days if nobody cracks the six digit codes oh, will give you a clue will reveal one of the numbers 
and move to level two. Then for the next three days, you can attempt to crack the five-digit code and win $50,000. So, if no one cracks level two within three days, you get another clue, but it will cost you at level three, crack the four-digit code for $5,000. But if you can't get the code, you'll get another clue and move to level four, where you can win $500 by cracking the three-digit code. We'll stay at level four until somebody cracks it. When that happens, We'll start all over again at level one. And you'll have the chance to win $250,000 all over again. And for the first time ever, a count and over-the-counter players can play via the in-store kiosk on the web or on your mobile. For web mobile players, you simply visit either islandluck.com or ultragames.com and log into your account and select crack the code link. For over-the-counter players, just select the crack the code link and enter the voucher code at the bottom of your ticket. On behalf of Island Luck and Ultra Games, good luck and happy cracking. Visit islandluck.com or ultragames.com for more information. My spiritual advisor, you were concerned over the fact that I was stressing yeah, the well, S. Yeah, I was, was stressing the S. Do well, you have do to overemphasize the S? I mean, yes. Aren't you going to ask me why? Yeah, go ahead. One day, I was at an FNM gathering when Sir Orville Turnquist, a former governor general, of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas was speaking. And as I listened to him, he stressed the S's. And so, after the hmm. speech, I said to Sir right. Orville, Sir Orville, I noted that you were stressing the S's. Uh -huh. And he said to me, that Fem was the proper way oh, really? to do it. Okay. And don't forget, so Orville went to the then government high. So Orville is an intellectual extraordinaire. So I've decided that whenever I want to impress anyone, I shall stress, stress the, S. the S's. Okay? Uh, That's where I learned that from. It will stress the S. Yeah, that is where I have learned that from. Okay. Yesterday, I told you that I was talking about the incoming Commissioner of Police, Anthony Ferguson. It is to be noted that the outgoing Commissioner of Police, Ellison Greenslade, in his final speech, Mr. Greenslade said that he was not forced out. By that, I concluded that he must remain. He could have resisted. I regret that Greenslade has said that he has not been forced out because the whole nation believes that he has been forced out by a mean-spirited and wicked FNM. I'm going to read a few of the lines. I'm not going to be critical of Greenslade because Papa speaks to me in mystic mystical ways. Papa, I'm hearing things. Is that your wife? You know, Papa does magic, right? Really? Yeah. Papa's a magic man. You know, be careful. <laughs> what do you, you mean, be careful? Let me tell you, you say a lot of things about the former prime minister, and, you know, I'm getting to the point where you have to, you know, be careful about that. Where were you, you know, in 1990 you're, you're when about Papa stood <laughs> out of what is today, stood outside what is today called? Uh -huh. John Bull. On Bay Street? On Bay Street. Yeah, 1990. Well, 1990, yeah. right? That's yeah. two years before he won the election. Papa was wearing a black hat. Everybody knew what that was. So is Papa the Obia man? 
I never said Papa did Oprah. <laughs> you said I said Papa <laughs> is a magic man. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of magic? But there were many people in the family island. You had a black hat. Yeah, when Papa land in one of the family island, the people them run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, let me let me not get in that. The right. intellectual extraordinaire. Let me not get in Felix that. Battle. Upon seeing Papa in his black hat, he lectured that Papa was the chief of the village. Felix Battle. Yeah. Oh. Papa. Uh, Papa could do little things. The next time I see him, I'll ask him about that. Ask him! I, I can will. show you a picture of Papa and his black hat. I know a fool still that he frequents on Sundays. Listen so. to me, I would never lie on Papa. I'm going to ask him Papa about that. Papa could do little things. Yeah? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. How do you think he was able to beat Finley? <laughs> Why are you laughing? No. <laughs> you have well, to understand. His magic must be bigger than Ping on, because yeah. I know Ping was a magic man too, eh? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> but I know... That <laughs> Papa, you think it's an accident that we call him Papa? Hmm. Huh? You think so? So what was the bag all about? Which bag? And Papa got a... No, 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 no. Pa <laughs> Papa never carried a bag. <laughs> Papa, Papa could do things. Oh, Lord. Great Slid, I was not forced out of police. I was not forced out of police, insists Great Slid. Outgoing Commissioner of Police, Ellison Greenslade, yesterday shot down claims that he was forced to step down as leader of the Royal Bahamas Police Force. Let me be very forthright in telling you that I was not forced out of the Royal Bahamas Police Force, he told reporters. The first time he has publicly addressed the Minister Administration's decision to replace him with new police commissioner, Anthony Ferguson. The Prime Minister, said Greenslade, currently has treated me with the greatest measure of respect from the day he won the election, he said. There are actually no hidden agendas and news stories. Let me read that again because I don't understand what Greenslade is saying. Greenslade said, there are actually no hidden agendas and news stories. The time has come for me to move on. Mr. Greenslade said he enjoyed the full confidence of all prime ministers under whom he has served as commissioner, including Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis. At no time could I recall having any conversations, privately or publicly, with any of those three prime ministers where I perceived any disrespect afforded to me, he said. As for the lengthy period of uncertainty this summer about his future, the former police chief said he had to maintain silence while he went through the confirmation process for his new diplomatic role, I was offered an appointment as a high commissioner resident to the United Kingdom and a non-resident ambassador to a number of European countries. A very important posting. Had I spoken out of time, had the commissioner spoken out of time, had Minister Dames spoken out of time, or the Minister of Foreign Affairs, we would have had a challenge, and that could have been embarrassing to me in the first instant and to my family. Mr. Greenslade defended his time as commissioner, noting as he often did during his tenure that crime trended downward under his watch. We have a vexing problem with this business of murder. Well, Green Slate is demonstrating what I call diplomatic skills. Here it is, the menace and the FNM.
has forced him out. Notwithstanding what he has said, he has taken a diplomatic approach. All right? I don't know. Tomorrow, I may tell you why Greenslade finally decided he would go. I don't know. You know, Greenslade is a monker. And I don't know. But I don't know if I should tell you. But Minister forced him out. And as an FNM, I know why. I know why. But I don't know if I should say it. Now, I've been looking for the president of the BTC union, Bernard Evans. I call you on an unknown number. And you may answer the phone. I really would like for you to come on the show so that I could find out what is happening with BTC? I need to know. Because I'd like to help you and the union to prepare them. So I want you to give me a call, Brother Evans. I am the Negro man that you took down to Andrus. You forget? You took me to Andrus. I went with you. Now I think you owe me one. I'd like for you to come on the show. And my number is 434 Five seven six zero. Do you know Bernard Evans, the president of the BTCU Union or the BTC Union? I'd like for him to join us on Freedom March because I'm concerned about the plight of the people there. So please do that for me. My spiritual advice, I want to do a little shout out, and then, of course, I want you to go to the text. Yeah, let me see how much we have, actually. All right. So, to Mr. Burnt Tell, Andrews, listen, I run into your daughter. She proclaimed that she is one of the woman them, and she told me about her father. Burnt Tell, Andrews, I salute you. And then to a lady that I ran into. You remember when I walked away? You thought I was being rude, eh? What you said touched my heart. Oh, it touched my heart because of what you said to me. So I will try to push your name in so that people will not know that I'm specifically referring to you. But I ran into a Negro lady who said to me, Mr. Monker, I am on dialysis. Wow. And every day when I go, I sit back and I watch Freedom March. Wow. And if only you know what you do for me as I am watching. And I became emotional. That's why I walked away and I said to the young man, take her number. All right? So... Interesting. I don't know if I was flattered, but I think I was. All right? Anyway, I hope things work out for you. So I'm going to read and give salute to Cynthia Finley. I met your wonderful daughter, Deidre Finley, and she could stroke an ego. She said, you and her are faithful watchers to Freedom Mark. And that y'all are one of the women there. So when I march, I expect y'all to come and join the march. And then there is Katie Brown. And she works at road traffic. Hello, Katie. You are wonderful. And to Janice Roll. Listen, I'm happy that you are one of the women there. This is powerful. My spiritual advisor, do we have any texts? Yeah, um, and of course, let me let me give some shout out to some of your viewers here on this ILTV Facebook. Let's see, we're gonna give a shout out to Florence Johnson, um, Jereen Morris, Miko Sanz. These are all the people who watch you daily, Mr. Monka. Wow. Um, Kenyatta Johnson. These are wonderful people. Uh, Miss, is this Miss Berry? Miss Mocha Berry. Uh, who calls himself Mocha Berry? Um, we got a uh, shout out to Snowflakes. Dana Munnins. Uh, you get 
KJ Bahama. Uh, s s shout out to Paris Sanders. Uh, do they call Jerrine name? Jerrine Morris. Lamont Bastian. Uh, Cis is that Cicely or Cicely Taylor? You got Nikisha Sanders. Donna Penniman. Shorty Roll. <laughs> Put the camera on family. the spiritual advice. I want to take a call, okay? Yeah, a special shout out to Shorty Roll. Then you got uh, somebody by the name of Star Santoy. Is that Santon? Whoever. Marvin K. Says. Um, Wanda Bonamy. Um, Jessica. Yes. Special shout out to Jessica Ferguson. Uh, Florence Pratt Mayer. Um, who else we have? Did I did I call Nikisha name? Nikisha Sanders, Heidi Gooding. Um uh, am, I, am I missing it? Megan Thompson. Shout out to the Black Rose. Um shout out to Ms. Shiva Simmons. Denrick Moss. Mr 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 uh, Mr Monkey have a lot of people watching you now. Yeah. Um Royale Major. Shout out to all these people. Patricia Smith. Uh, Nikki Baker. I hope I'm calling these names right. But you have quite a bit of people. Val Small, Edna Pew, Nicola Stubbs. Wow. Shout out to all you people, okay? Okay. You better read some text, my special advisor. Yeah, let me. I have just let received. Me get, uh, 60 texts, right? You got 60. International call. I have been advised that Bernard Evans, who is in international. Heard me. Goodness me. What kind of freedom march is this? That this man could be miles away from the Bahamas and he knows immediately of the invitation. Well, praise the Lord. Thank God for technology. Thank God for TV. Thank God for Facebook and all them other technology. Bernard Evans will join me on Freedom March tomorrow if it is God's will. Man, it's powerful technology, eh? Go ahead, my spiritual advisor, read some text. Yes, let me read some text. Who names themselves Miss Mocha Berry? Don't, that's, don't, that's, don't, that's question, don't question people children's <laughs> name. All right? Miss Mocha Berry. Okay, here we go. Um, good day, gentlemen. Mr. Monka, you, you got me cracking up right now. Thomas Bastian is dead. Wow, now that is powerful. You're asking him to give you a call at 6 p.m. Mr. Monka, watching the House of Parliament is a waste of time. People are hurting bad out there. F and them playing games, no jobs, but no, no. Why do they want to get me mixed up in that, Mr. My Monka? spiritual advisor, read the text. Good day, Go Senator. Please, visit Grand Bahama. It's hard for many. All the people want is some work to do, but there are no jobs, Mr. Monka. I never thought Grand Bahama would have gotten so bad. It's not the people's time. It's praying time. Wow. Um, good day, Senator. I don't think the Bahamian people and some fans are following what is happening in the country. While the Department of Labor is saying they need people to work, their ministries are firing Bahamians. While this is happening, Cabinet is considering fast-tracking work permits. Doesn't this sound contradictory and hypocritical, Mr. Monker? It is. Mr. Monk, in order to collect hotel pension, you have to have contributed for 10 or more years and reached the age of 65 to receive full pension. To receive early pension, 55 or older, one must, be a, must, one must have contributed 15 years or more to the fund. I think that sounds... Well, when I show up, you all explain it to me because I want my money if I'm entitled. But if I'm not, no problem. Uh, here we go. Um, good day, Mr. Monk. Uh, you need to be fair. You have some people who have jobs. They go to social services for help and make making it hard for those who really need it. Uh, you can't get it. You need to go there and see it for yourself, Mr. Monka. Uh, good evening, Mr. Monka. Shout out to all the waitresses in Club Med, especially Michael and Pandora. Michael and Pandora, you all still around? This is Ursula. Do you remember me? Have a blessed evening. Uh, Ursula, I remember you. You are a wonderful, wonderful Negro woman. We're about to go to the break. We'll save the rest of these for after the break. You're not read text my spiritual advisor and tell you hear the music. One more? Okay, good afternoon, Mr. Monka. We need help in Freeport. There are no jobs, Mr. Monka. Uh, let me try to get one more in. That's it. Freeport! I have to come down because our boy. 
Oh boy. There's an F and M. Papa! Why don't help men this out, man? To find some jobs for the people there. Spread them out. Be right back after the break. Do you have something to say to the Senator? Call Freedom March at 323-7775. Toll free from anywhere in the Bahamas at 242-300-0045. Freedom March with Rodney Monter, only on ILTV. This is Freedom March with Rodney Monker. Welcome back to Freedom March, broadcasting live on ILTV Studios here in Nassau, Bahamas. My name is Rodney Monker. Bradley Roll is my spiritual advisor. He, of course, is a biblical scholar. Bradley, Absolutely. welcome to Freedom March once again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Monker. So I was under the impression that the airport taxi drivers were to carry out some in industrial action yeah. today. The last time they were here, I think they said they were going to do that, eh? But it appears that the meeting which I suggested that they should hold with Dr. Menes might be paying off. Okay. I don't know. Okay. I haven't heard from my good yeah, friend. What Jack's in? Nicola Jacks. Okay. I hear okay. one of the children there. Yeah, you got some calls. He's on the phone. Hello. Welcome to Freedom Match. Is this one of the children there? Hello, Manga. Hello, my ch child. Hello, Manga. How are you? How are you? Good. This is great. What is on your mind? Good. This is great. What is on your mind? I wanted to tell you that. Can you shout, shout out to Sandra Bennett? Sandra Bennett? Of course! Sandra Bennett! How are you? It's a shout out from one of the children there. Anybody else you want me to shout out to? Anybody else you want me to shout out to? And to John Gardner. John Gardner? And to John Gardner. John Gardner. I have one of the children them saying I'm a shout out to you. So how old are you? I nine. You're nine? I'm nine. Goodness. You're nine. Can you guess when I was nine? Yes, sir. Well, I was nine in 1965. Nine in 1965. You see how long ago that was? Yes, sir. Anyway, I want you to take good care and listen to what your parents say, okay? Yes, sir. God bless you and take good care. God bless you and take good care. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> This so is cute, powerful. Eh? <laughs> One of the children them. Lord Jesus, I thank you. Help me to be the right example because there are thousands of people listening, including the children them. And I would like to continuously be a good example for all the children them. Isn't that powerful, my spiritual advisor? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You must help and, me indeed. to pray. Yes, sir. Now we have more texts? Yeah. But I'd like to give a special shout out to a beautiful young lady. Spiritual advisor, don't send now. Down in Green Turtle Key, Abaco. Oh, who can that possibly is, be? Is she in Green Turtle Key? No, not Green Turtle Key. Goodness of my sea. Is Mesca, where are you from? Mesca Hebron. That's on the Cat Island. It, no, no, she's in Abaco. Really? Is, yeah, is she in Green Turtle Key? I don't know. Just give a shout yeah. out to the Mads, Mads. And stop I, sinning. I'm not sinning. Goodness She's me. my friend. I missed, I was supposed to send a shout out to her while I was sending a shout out to everybody else. Okay. All right, so happy, sh uh, 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 special shout out to Mads, okay? Uh, now, let's see how much more text we got here, Mr. Monker. Go ahead. Listen, tomorrow, oh, yeah, right Bernard here. Evans will join me because... I have been advised that he has heard my call and he's way out of the country. I mean, how is it possible, my spiritual advisor, mm -hmm. that people could be out of the Bahamas and still see me? What's going on? I mean, that's easy, eh? Tell me. Social media. Okay. You got Facebook, you know. This is worldwide, right? Really? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Man, that's it's powerful. Easy. Yeah, very powerful. Yeah. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. 
Okay, here we go. Go ahead. Here we go, Mr. Monka. I'm trying to reach this My one, special advice this one text. I can't read the hello. Um, good if afternoon. If it is sinful, do not read it because the children them are listening. Uh, Mr. Monka. Yes. When you go on to smarten up, you don't have all the facts about the commission inquiry. You know, Penland was mixed up. In uh, be careful. I shall not allow oh, them yeah, to okay. attack. So, so that's what I'm telling you. I have all. I have the flow to some of these text, man. I have the 1984 Commission of Inquiry. Not only that, I attended every session. Not only that, I'm the only person who can remember when Salatil Thompson testified how Mr. Paul Thompson, who was 90, had oh. incited him to take up arms and overthrow Penland. I'm the only person who knows of the secret orders that Penland has sent to every stalwart counselors. See, I know these things. Okay, my spiritual advisor, go ahead. All right, one of these, some of these texts, I have to skip through them. Why, I, why are you okay. doing it? Good afternoon, Mr. Monka. Can you find out why some of the high schools in Eleuthera, in particular, Windermere High in Savannah Sound hasn't received the high school diplomas as yet. Well, I, I have the reason. Go ahead. Read I've it. contacted the ministry and the school and both are unable to lo locate them. It's been about four months now. No diplomas yet. Did they bite off more than they can chew? The Minister of Education. What is his name? Mr. Jeffrey Lloyd. Mr. Jeffrey Lloyd is outside of the country. Him and Desmond Edwards are both matriculating. Desmond who? Desmond Edwards. Okay, okay. Who you thought I meant? No, that's all right, that's all right. Go ahead. My special advisor, what's your problem? That's all right, go ahead. You're right, okay. The Minister of Education, Jeffrey Lloyd, and Desmond Edwards are both, or have both been spotted matriculating in France. <laughs> they are attending what they describe <laughs> as some UNESCO. All right, that's where he is. And only him know where the awards are. Don't forget, um, Lionel Sands is not well, and M Melinda Wilson is alleged to be taking over. And Jeff can't trust nobody in the education ministry. So you're going to have to wait till he comes from France. And it takes like about 13 hours to fly to. Paris. So that's where he's at. And you watch the government. They never issue a statement to tell us where Jeff is. But they don't know. Every other day, I just count ministers. And when I don't see a certain number of ministers, I make inquiry. All ministers I'm doing is flying all over the world. They accuse Fred Mitchell and the PLP of just flying. Now Jeff and Desmond, they are matriculating in France. Le matriculation. Now, Paris. Go ahead, my spiritual advisor. Okay. What are you doing? You're not reading the people's yes, text. Yes, some of them are unsaved, Mr. Monka. Okay, here's a good one. Mr. Monka, that lady who called about her husband got injured two years ago at BZ, she refused to go against her beloved PLP. Mr. Monka, anytime the FNM wins the election, they will change the police commission. Mr. Monka, yes. Mr. Monka, cut this point of my seat. Why are you repeating this four times? Uh, Mr. Monka, I agree with what Glennis Hannah Martin did in resigning. Now Piceville will finally have something to do. F no, come on. Read it, read it, read it, read it. Now Piceville will finally have something to do finally. Um, spiritual but advisor, will you finally advise Mr. Monker that Frankie is sure as gold and that he and Wayne Monroe is on the wrong track? Good afternoon, Mr. Monker. I'm one of the children them, and my Grammy is one of the woman them. Listen, I yearn to meet your Grammy. Hello, welcome to Freedom Match. Hello? Hello? What happened? I cannot hear. If you'd like... Goodness of my see, there's nobody. Yeah, another call is coming through. Please! That's it? Good afternoon. Oh, yes, okay. 
Good, please send belated birthday greeting to little Tamara on Grand Title Key from our family. Tamara, happy birthday. I want you to know that my daddy, the late George Gilbert Monker, his father, Gilbert Gifford Monker, was born in Grand Title Key. And so was his father and his mother and their parents. Hello, welcome to Freedom Match. Happy birthday, Tamara. Hello. Hello, Monka. Hey. I, I am calling today to tell you, can you please stop City Curse from closing every week? Say that again. Can you please stop a school from closing every week? They keep closing it. The school? R which school? Curtis? Sadie Curtis? Yes, sir. Oh. Really? They do that every week? Yes, sir. They oh. close it for a whole week. Really? Why? And then open it back so early. Why, why are they closing it? Nobody knows. Listen, how old are you? Nine. Listen, how many nine-year-olds you know? Because I've never led nine-year-olds into a match. <laughs> we may have to pick at them. Okay? Yes, sir. You, do you know how to hold placards? Yes, sir. But listen, if you don't know... You better learn it from me because I am 60, okay? But I will speak to them and ask them to stop doing it, okay? Yes, sir. You take good care and make sure when the school opens, you study hard, 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 all right? Yes, sir. You take good care. God bless you. Thank you. Jeff oh, Lloyd. Such a sweet child. Why are you all closing the school for the children down? Sadie Curtis, where is that? Sadie oh, Curtis on, on is off Carmichael Ch Road. No, no. Sadie Curtis is yeah, in... Off, off Charles on his highway. Right. Is, is it that? Yeah. I think that is I so. Think that is it. I have a woman there. To the woman who sang on my 60th birthday, call me. Because in 29 days, you're going to have to sing again. Let me know what is happening at Sadie Curtis. I asked Deacon Jeff Lloyd to not treat the children in this regard. Keep the school open. In fact, I would like for school to be held seven days. Just keep the children them and educate them. How does it sound? Okay, here we go. Um, Mr. Monk, could, could you give a special shout out to Mistress Sharice Char Washington? She is one of the beautiful women them. I know Sharice. Sharice, you are a wonderful Negro woman, and I salute you. Okay? Right. Uh, Mr. Monica, the hotel industry, there's no work. No one cares about the people that work in the industry. Uh, Stop that saying that because the Aguila is fighting for workers. Can't you see the Aguila trying to get Bahama to increase the number of tourists coming into the country? Don't stop it. Go ahead. Uh, let's see here, Mr. Monica. That's a special message for you. That's all? Um, no more tax? Fine text, I see one. Um, yeah, good afternoon, Mr. Monka. I'm one of the children, them, and my Grammy is one of the women, them. God save the Queen. Now, you are a wonderful Negro citizen. Never forget the Queen. Mr. Monka. Yes. Good evening to you. I used to work at a place called, should I call the place? Call the place! Little Feet Academy. Okay. Miss, should I call the person's name? Well, if it's, not, if it's unsafe, don't say it. No, it has something to do with Just hiring and firing. say Miss X. Okay, Miss X fired me because I told the principal that the oil was not good for the children because it was there from the end of June to October. Okay. From the time I was there working. Uh, and from the time I was there working, she did not pay NIB and was taken out of my check. Oh, that's I an offense. I would like for you to bring... It to the attention of the National Insurance Board, please. Listen, better than that, just go down to National Insurance yeah, I think and tell them. There, there is a Negro woman I know down there. What's her name? She's a right. What the right woman name? I can't remember. I believe she's the only right. She's a wonderful Negro woman. I was coming from Freeport and the plane starts shaking up. I turned to her and I said, Madam, I am afraid of the plane shaking up. And she wanted to know how she could help me. 
I said, can you hold me on your chest? And she said, Senator, for you, anything. And I lie on her chest. And like a baby, she wrapped me. I even don't know when the plane landed. Go look for Miss Wright. Lynn Wright at NIB. And to the husband of Lynn Wright, I want you to know that a hugging of me was pure. Mr. Monka. I have a phone call okay. from Sadie Curtis. Hello. Go ahead. Welcome to Freedom March. The non senator. Yes, ma'am. Um, what was what was the information you needed? I, um, a, a nine year old call saying that Curtis, Sadie Curtis closed down too much. I think if I understood him correctly, he suggested that you would close for a week and then open up the following week. I hope I'm quoting him correctly. What is the problem at Sadie Curtis? Well, Mr. Manka, I really don't know of that problem there. Are you the woman who sings to me? This is the birthday girl. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> but I really, really don't know what... Um, the, the student is talking about because our school started at 8.45 yeah. and we, co we complete the day at 3 o'clock. But let me ask you a question. Last week, Monday, was there school? Last week, Monday, yes, there was. What about Tuesday? Yes, there was. Wednesday? No, there was no school for the Why? student. Why? Why? It was a professional. Wednesday, Thursday was teacher's professional workshop. What about Friday? Friday was the teacher's holiday. So how many days that was that there was no school? No, that's that. It wasn't the school. It's the government. It's it's a ministry of education. Oh, we had okay. a professional, two professional work days for the teachers. How many days did the school close? Oh, that would have been two days. Well, listen, I'm opposed to that. If you all need to take a day off, let me know and I'll come and hold school. No, no, time. no, Mr. Monkey, you have that wrong. It isn't to take a day off. The teachers had professional workshop. Okay. Yes, it wasn't to take a day off. And who lectured you all? We had different people come in and give us motivated speakers from different places and come and speak to the staff. It was very good. Really? Yes, very good. Well, I have confidence in you because you are one of the women there. And I's the one that sang your birthday song to you. Listen, in 29 days' time, I shall be 60 plus. Okay? And come and visit me and I'll sing a birthday song for you again. Oh, praise the Lord. What a wonderful Negro woman. Is there a man in your life? Jesus is the man. Oh, hallelujah. Continue yeah, to save that's him. That's the right man. Because you are saved and I am saved. Thank you very much, Mr. Monica. Take good care, my love. Well, the young man, the young student did have some allegation. Read text, my um, spiritual advisor. Get after Read text. Sorry, I have a caller. Call, call, yeah. Hold on. Hello. Welcome to Freedom Match. Speak to me. Spe speak to me. Hello. Yes. Yes. Don't listen to the TV. Just talk to me. Hello, Rodney. Yes. Just your um um niece did. Hey, how are you, my dear? Hi, um... For my niece, you sure don't have any manners. Couldn't you say... Okay, I want you to... Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Couldn't you say uncle? Say, say uncle. Yes. Uncle Rodney. That's better. Yes? Okay, I'd like you to just two things for me. What is that? Okay, I was on... um, I was on a job unit to Yost, right? Right. For month, September. Ms. Butler only paid me $350 for five weeks. $350 for five weeks? Yes. Well, Miss Butler, as you might not know, listen to me, is a wonderful woman. She has been frustrated by this wicked, evil f and government who has put on her certain burdens of which she is incapable of performing. And Carl Battle and those have not offered her assistance. That's one of the problems. And then, of course, national insurance has frustrated her because there are a number of patients who are working there and national insurance are required to accommodate her. But you being my niece, you relax, I shall come to see you and we shall talk with Miss Butler, okay? You heard me? I have a next one too. Go ahead. Hello? Yes, I'm listening. 
I have a next one too. Let me go hear to it. Martin. Go, go to Martin. Yes. What happened there? Mr. Capron. Okay. Now be careful because Capron is a saved man. Go ahead. What is the problem? He gave now? me one hundred dollars last week Saturday. Okay. And how much? And he, how much he owes you? He uh, he owes me nine hundred dollars more. Okay. Um, I want you to understand that he takes care of a lot of elderly um, citizens. And one of the problems that they are experiencing is, one, not getting the full financial support, and the f &M has been pussy-footing. But you leave it to me, my blessed niece. I shall come and speak to you. Go ahead, my spiritual advisor. Uh, read. Yeah, I think she's gone. <laughs> Um, Mr. Monko, yes. Honorable Senator, don't you realize that if the court declares, Go ahead. if the court declares that Frankie is not a Bahamian, even yeah. though he was born before '73, don't you realize that we have lots of persons born here in the Bahamas prior to 1973 to non bahamians and yet still they're still, they're still citizens? So. Sorry about that. So, are you saying that all of those people are not Bahamians? I know a lot of persons born in the Bahamas, and they have nothing to prove this, and yet they, and yet the PLP actually gave them citizenship. What about all those people they found in Acklands when they cut that particular road in the back of the bush? The PLP gave all those people in Now, you all stop that, because when that boat was heading to Nassau. The PLP was in bond. <laughs> Y'all stop the lie. The Emmanuels, they were on the boat. The Delavo, the Devo. And as they were coming from Haiti to the Bahamas, they lost direction <laughs> and crashed in the back of there. And they have been in the back there for years. Pendon was in bond, Hannah was in bond, Sir Clifford Darling wasn't born. That was in the 1800s. You all stop this lie. Okay? Now, as it relates to Frankie, do not miss the argument. Frankie cannot prove citizenship because there is no documentary evidence to show that Frankie was born in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. His best way out is for minutes to acknowledge it and naturalize him. That's the first problem. Secondly, the man that Frankie claimed as his father, Edwin um, Campbell, that was not his real name. Edwin Campbell was working in Cat Island for the Campbell family, and he took on that name. So Frankie would need to do a deed poll. That's what's going on. We have the evidence, you know. I'm getting ready to have an exhibition to raise little money. And the exhibition shall be called, Has Frankie Campbell Gone Bananas? Read text. Okay, here we go. Um, good day, Mr. Monka. Um, all the way from me, Luther, would you please give a happy birthday shout to my grandmother, Gertrude Saunders. Gertrude Saunders, happy Birthday. And also a happy anniversary to my grandparents, Michael and Gertrude Sanders. Michael and Gertrude Sanders, listen to me. From your loving kids. Happy anniversary from your loving kids. And outside of y'all, I only know two Gertrude. We had, a, we had a matriarch in Black Village. Her name was Gertrude. And I have a first cousin who's married a Gertrude. Uh, Gertrude. Good evening, Mr. Monka. We want you to give a shout out to... Our mother, Zelma Wilson. Wow, Birth Zelma today, Wilson. She's 80. Happy birthday Coming to from you. from daughter and son-in-law. You are 80. And listen to me, those who were born in November are wonderful people. Good day, Mr. Monka. What was the outcome of the taxi drivers at the airport? I have not been able to reach Brother Jax. You know, him and the Prime Minister, they're very tight. And so I really didn't want them to strike at the airport. So I remind Jax, and I think that him and Dr. Minnis and the Minister of Tourism, they're working out things. 
I think he should give the Prime Minister and the Minister of Tourism an opportunity to resolve this issue then when they fail. Mr. Monka, we want to know how come you are so knowledgeable, you are so correct on that issue, Selena Point Ackland. I'm a historian and a part of my craziness is my ability in the midst of insanity to learn sense. That's what it is, okay? In the midst of my insanity, I am being educated. Good day, Mr. Monka. I work for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. You have husbands and wife working in the same department and are running amok and pussyfooting. Is that a conflict of interest, Mr. Monka? Well, let me pray over it because they're now discovering that when husband and wife are working together, more work is done. I don't know. I'll think about it. Go ahead, my spiritual advisor. That's all the text, Mr. Monk. You That's have no it. more text? Well, let me see if I could read one more because the time is running out. Good afternoon, Mr. Monka. I'm one of the children, then. And my name is Darren. Darren, I'm proud of you. Good morning. Good afternoon, Mr. Monka. I love you and spiritual advisor. I love watching your show. Keep up the good work. I thank you. Mr. Monka, your spiritual survivor is not a patriot. He's a cow. You need to check him out. Stop calling the spiritual advisor a cow. He's not a cow. He's a wonderful man. I'm proud of him. I'll see you tomorrow with Bernard Evans. Good night, everyone. The thoughts, views, and comments expressed by Rodney Monker, his guests, callers, and advisors on Freedom March are not necessarily those of the management, ownership, or production unit of ILS, the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is a production of ILTV Studios and cannot be reproduced or represented in part or entirety without the express written consent of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is the intellectual property of the Verizon Media Group. Copyright 2017. All rights are reserved.